love about our military? What do I love about the military? You mean besides the stupid haircuts and their ability to do just lots of push-ups? Oh, um, <laughs> I love the sense of solidarity they instill. I love the brotherhood that exists there. And I use the term loosely. I know there are a lot of women serving and I'm glad of that. But the, the family that they set forth, the unity is really intense. That's something that seems to be a little bit missing in modern society that's still being held out in the military is that sense of unity, that sense of individuals coming together for the sense of a greater whole. And it's not ideal and it doesn't always work. Hell, most of the time it doesn't work, but the sense is there and the goal is there and they strive for that. I spent most of my life researching Vietnam and the guys coming home and how that affected them. So I was sort of prepared, at least on an intellectual level, for Joe coming home. It was March. He got back from Iraq in March. And uh, everything was OK while they were still in California. But because it was a reserve unit, they get broken up and sent back home after their debriefing. Debriefing is two weeks long. Two weeks. Two weeks of people telling you you're going to be okay and you answering questions the way you think they want you to answer them so that you can go home. They were stationed in Oceanside, the unit was all together, they weren't with their families, it wasn't reality, and they were just really, really, really freaking glad to be alive. We talk now quite a bit and um, he's been diagnosed 50% PTSD rating in the years since we stopped talking. He also lost complete hearing in his left ear which was a delayed side effect of the war. So that diagnosis and the PTSD came pretty well hand in hand. Um, he's working through it. Mostly he's scared because he doesn't know what some of the stuff is that's happening to him. Because there's stuff about PTSD that people don't explain. It's not just nightmares and not being able to sleep and anger and hallucinations. It's sadness. You're sad and you don't know why. These are grown men trained to be killers. They are the toughest men on the planet, the US Marines. And they'll just cry like little girls and they don't know why. And it's, you know, they're so raw. They have, there's, there's just survival instinct left. So anything is gonna be a heightened emotion. Everything's a big deal. But we ran into each other a few weeks ago, I was home visiting my family, and um, he was there, and we hung out, and we went out one night, and we're sitting at the same bar with a lot of the same people that we were seven years ago, and all of a sudden, he just got a look, and I knew. I knew he wasn't in the room we were in anymore. He was okay, but he froze, and he backed up, and he got himself where there was no one behind him, and he stood really still, looking around, and I said, Okay, it's time to go. I paid our tab and I got him outside and I said, hey, you okay? And he said, I was in a marketplace all of a sudden. This is a bar we've known our whole lives. We worked there together for years. All friends, all friendly people, and he just couldn't do it. Just the, he said, I don't know what it was. It was something about the way the crowd shifted at once. It was some movement, it was something, I don't even know what. And it triggered, it was a trigger, and I was just, in a marketplace in Fallujah. I said, okay, well, why didn't you come get me? Because he would have stood there in the corner and let me sit and talk to our friends. And I said, why didn't you come get me? And he said, because it's not your problem. He said, my PTSD should not affect your life. It should not interrupt your Friday night. And I said, and what are you talking about? I said, your PTSD is everybody's PTSD. Your friends, your coworkers, your family, your mom, your dad, your girlfriend, all of us, everyone who knows you and is with you is experiencing your PTSD with you. Not to the extent, we don't really know what's going on. Most of the people you encounter have no idea what's happening, but they know something's not right. You can't do this by yourself. You shouldn't have to do this by yourself.